Some of my best deals are on market. That is to say the property is listed for sale with a real estate agent. And since the offer is written up by the agent and then presented to the seller, it's important you make sure the contract has everything you need as a wholesaler and a flipper. So on today's video, I'm gonna share with you step-by-step -step how to get agents to make offers for investors and specifically my 10 point checklist. This is a video you don't wanna miss, coming up. For a limited time, you can get a free copy of Jerry Norton's Data Cruncher software, which finds cheap houses in your area. Get it now at mydatacruncher.com. If you're new here to this channel, I'm Jerry Norton with FlippyMastery.com, and this channel is all but ways to help you make money wholesaling and flipping real estate so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss new videos. Wholesaling and flipping houses starts with finding a distressed property where the seller is motivated to sell at a discount. After presenting and making an offer to the seller and after negotiating the price and terms, if agreeable, in order to officially secure, or what I call lock up the deal, you must get a legally binding written contract. Known as a purchase and sale agreement, once fully executed, the seller can't sell the property to anyone else. That contract is what protects your interest in the deal. That contract is a valuable asset that can be assigned for profit or purchased with equity. Everything is about the contract. Without it, you've got nothing. That's why it's critical you understand exactly what goes into a purchase and sale agreement and what terms and clauses need included. So when it comes to the actual paperwork, how it's handled, who fills it out, and what specific contract is used, it depends on whether or not the property is on market or off market. On market means the seller hired a real estate agent to list and sell the property. This means the buyer and seller don't communicate with each other directly. All negotiations are done between a real estate agent on behalf of a buyer and seller. Now a common question I'm asked is if you as a buyer can go around the agent directly to the seller and the answer is no. The seller has a contractual agreement with the listing agent and you must either go directly to the listing agent representing the seller or use a buyer's agent to make the offer on your behalf. Now I teach a technique I call the double dip technique where you go directly to the listing agent so that they are motivated to work with you and get your offer accepted. Now I did a video that breaks down how to do this technique in detail. I'll put the link to that video in the description below and you can watch it later. The nice thing about on market offers is you don't have to worry about producing the paperwork or filling it out. The agent representing you on the offer will use their state approved paperwork and they will fill it out for you to sign, usually using electronic signature technology like DocuSign, and then they'll present the offer to the listing agent or the seller. However, even though the agent handles the paperwork, you still need to make sure that the offer includes everything that's important to you. In fact, there are 10 critical things to make sure the agent includes in your offer. Let's review those 10 things in detail now. The first thing is the exact name to go on the contract as the buyer and your address. Now, hopefully you've set up an entity to operate your business. You can use your personal name as the buyer. So if you don't have an entity set up yet, don't let that stop you, but there's no reason to wait. It's easier and cheaper than you think to set up an entity. I did a video where I show you how to do it yourself for like $127. I'll put the link to that video in the description below and you can watch it later. So if you do have an entity, then you will sign on behalf of the entity. LLCs have members, not managers or owners. So if my entity were Jerry is a flipping genius LLC, I would sign Jerry Norton comma member. And in order to ensure your contract is assignable, you could add after your name the phrase and or assigns. What that means is you are the buyer and or anyone else that you assign the contract to. Now technically, unless a contract specifically says it is not assignable, then it is assignable and you don't need to add and or assigns. But if you wanna be extra precautious, you could add that. Just know that it may send a red flag to the agent and or seller that you are a wholesaler, which may be an issue. Now, if an agent or seller questions it, my response is the following. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna take title in my entity or one of my partner's entities, so I want the flexibility to change the name by closing date. And of course, partners is referring to my cash buyers. Now, I did a video where I break down in detail why I don't usually disclose to agents and sellers that my intent is to wholesale the deal. If you wanna check out that video, you know the drill, link in the description. Okay, the second thing is the most important and also pretty obvious, and that's your offer price. 
Now sometimes I'll choose a random price so it appears like I did a detailed methodical analysis to come up with my offer price. For example, if 125,000 is my desired buy price, I may offer $125,231. And since it's common for sellers to counter your offer, I usually go about 5,000 or so under my desired buy price so I have a little room to counter. Countering is a critical part of getting a deal and I wanna communicate with my counters that I don't have much room to come up. My rule is to come up on price incrementally while making the seller come down on price exponentially. For example, let's say a seller is asking 179,900 and my desired buy price is 125,000. I would offer 120,000. If he countered from 175 to let's say 160, I would counter at 122,000. Now, if the seller continues to come down, I would go up two more times and then stop at my original desired buy price of 125,000. Now, the third thing to include in your offer sheet is how you intend to fund the deal. As a wholesaler or flipper, I almost always go in all cash, even if I'm using hard money or private money to fund the purchase or if I intend to wholesale it. Now, all cash really means is you don't have a financing contingency. So if you can't fund the deal, you would forfeit your earnest money, which we'll cover in a minute, so keep watching. Some wholesalers will ask me, how can I say all cash if I don't actually have the cash? That's a valid concern. One way to look at it is to consider your money lenders or your cash buyers as your investors or partners. So for example, in wholesaling, your cash buyer is your partner responsible for funding the deal and your assignment fee is an early partner payout taken upfront at the time of purchase. Partnerships do that all the time. When talking to agents and sellers, I'll often say, I and my partners or investors will pay all cash. Then later when I bring in funding or a cash buyer, the agent or seller can't be surprised. The fourth thing to include in your offer sheet is proof that you have the funding to support your offer. This is called proof of funds and it's common for agents to request a proof of funds with a cash offer. Now, this is an easy solution if you're a member of my Flipster system. Pro and Prime level subscribers get access to unlimited proof of funds letters for as many offers as you want. To learn more and check it out, just go to getflipster.com. Now there is a difference between a hard proof of funds and a soft proof of funds, so make sure you know the difference. I'll put a link to a video I did in the description that breaks it down for you. The fifth thing to include in your offer sheet is that your offer to buy is as is, but you must have free and clear title. Now that may seem self-explanatory, but it's important to communicate to the seller that your offer is to take the property exactly how it is in its current condition, and you're not gonna come back and ask the seller to make repairs. Okay, the sixth thing to include in your offer sheet is an inspection contingency. Now I recommend a 10 day inspection contingency. That means you have a full 10 days after executing the contract to perform your due diligence on your deal. During this time, verify your numbers and find your cash buyer. If you discover during the 10 day window that you're off on your numbers and you don't actually have a deal, you can renegotiate or terminate the contract without any repercussions. In other words, you'll get back your earnest money deposit. Okay, the seventh thing to include in your offer sheet is the amount of your earnest money. Earnest money is a good faith deposit to be paid at the time of executing the contract that is applied towards the purchase on the day of closing. Now be sure to give the earnest money to the title company that will conduct the closing. With off market, I normally pay like $10 to $100 is all, but with on market, agents require a lot more typically 500 to $1,000, sometimes more. Now, I did a video which explains everything you need to know about earnest money, including a hack technique to get your buyer to pay your earnest money. I'll put that video in the description box below for you to watch later. But keep in mind, your earnest money is refundable during your inspection contingency, which means you can terminate the contract and get the earnest money refunded, but once that time is over, it will go hard, and if you don't perform on the contract, the seller keeps the earnest money, so always protect your earnest money. Okay, the eighth thing to include in your offer sheet is the closing date. Now my preference is a 30 day closing. This gives plenty of time to raise funds and prepare for a rehab if you're fixing and flipping, and it gives plenty of time to find a cash buyer if you're wholesaling. You could do a faster closing, 
but just know that the less time you give a buyer, the harder it is to wholesale your deal, and a 30-day closing is still considered fast. The ninth thing to include in your offer sheet is a written clause that needs added to the contract that addresses getting access to the property. Remember, whether you're fixing and flipping or wholesaling, you need to be able to get contractors and cash buyers in the property. If the seller is living in the home, add the following clause seller to give buyer unrestricted access to the property with 24-hour notice. If the property is vacant, add the following clause, seller to give buyer unrestricted access via a contractor lockbox. And the 10th thing to include in your offer sheet is another written clause that needs added to the contract that addresses using a wholesaler friendly title company. Some title companies are not familiar with or experienced doing assignments, so the wrong title company can kill your deal. And since the seller can choose their own title company, and since agents push hard to use their preferred title companies, it's important you get the seller to agree to use your title company. So add the following clause, seller to close with buyer's title company of choice. And if it's an issue with the agent or seller, add the following to get everyone on board, buyer to pay seller's closing fee. That makes it hard to argue using your title company. I even use this clause when I fix and flip because I want to build my relationship with my title closer so that they'll take care of me when I need them. And if you'd like to learn more about how to find and choose a wholesaler friendly title company, be sure to watch a video where I break it down, link in the description. So let me show you how to best make sure these 10 things are provided to the agent so that they can create your offer. Now I simply tell the agent I will email them my offer sheet with everything they need to write up the offer. This ensures they don't screw it up or forget something. And since no one gives away more content and free tools and resources than me, I'll give you my blank offer sheet template for free so that all you have to do is fill in the terms. And I'll also give you a filled out version as a reference. And while I'm at it, I'll give you my agent scripts for how to get agents to bring you their best deals following my double dip technique. So if you want all of that for free, I'll put the download link in the description. All I ask is you leave a comment and say, thank you, Jerry, for all the free resources. You are a flipping genius. Now to really help this video sink in, I did a video where you can watch me talk to an agent on the phone and make the offer. This will help you see how to make the offer. So watch that right now. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel. With over 500 videos, this is the number one channel on YouTube for all things wholesaling and flipping. And I'll see you on the next video.